Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, Don and Ellie here once again. Um, today we're going to be doing a uh, special unboxing video. So uh, I actually have uh, two packages here. Uh, this one and this one. And uh, both of these say MVD, so I'm assuming that means Arrow. Just uh, based on usual, you know, past stuff and all that. So, uh, you know, let's uh, dive in and see what we have. So, let's start with this one. The this going here. Okay. And one more cut. So take a uh, packing slip out. We don't <laughs> ruin what we have. And let's take a look. So packing slips. First off, we have the Sergio Martino collection. So, one of Italian cinema's most celebrated and prolific filmmakers, Sergio Martino worked across a range of genres, but is arguably best known for his giallo thrillers. This collection brings together three of his finest. So, we have Case of the Scorpion's Tale, Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, and Suspicious Death of a Minor. So, let's take a look. In Case of a Scorpion's Tale, recently widowed Lisa Baumer is summoned to Athens to collect her husband's generous life insurance policy, but soon discovers others are willing to kill to get their hands on it. We have audio commentary with the writer Ernesto Gastaldi, moderated by filmmaker Federico Cadeo. Under the Sign of the Scorpion, an interview with star George Hilton. The Scorpion Tales, an interview with director Sergio Martino. Jet Set Giallo, an analysis of Sergio Martino's films by Michael J. Cohen, author of La Dolce Mar Morte, Vernacular Cinema and the Italian Giallo Film. The Case of the Screenwriter Autor, a video essay by Troy Haworth, author of So Deadly, So Perverse, 50 Years of Italian Giallo Films, Trailer Image Gallery, uh, Reversible Sleep. Okay. In the Edgar Allan Poe-inspired Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, a brace of drunk Olivero amuses himself by holding drunken orgies and abusing his long-suffering wife. But when a series of grisly murders shakes the local community, Olivero finds himself in the frame. We have Through the Keyhole, an interview with director Sergio Martino. Unveiling the Vice, making a retrospective featuring interviews with Martino, star Edwidge Fenech, and screenwriter Ernesto Gastaldi. Dolls of Flesh and Blood, The Gialli of Sergio Martino, a visual essay by Michael McKenzie, exploring the director's unique contributions to the giallo genre. The Strange Vices of Miss Fennec, film historian Justin Harries on the New York actress, on the Your Vice actress's prolific career. Eli Roth on Your Vice and the Genius of Martino. Reversible Sleeve, featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Matthew Griffin. Okay, finally, The Suspicious Death of a Minor combines giallo and crime thriller tropes as an undercover cop Paolo pursues the Milanese criminal outfit responsible for the brutal murder of an underage prostitute, but finds himself up against a killer for hire who's bumping off witnesses before they have a chance to talk. So we have audio commentary by Troy Howarth, uh, So Deadly, So Perverse. Violet Milan, an interview with director and writer Sergio Martino. Reversible sleeve, yeah, so. Cool, so, sounds like a triple pack of winners. Um, I've seen the first two, I've seen Scorpion's Tail and uh, Your Vice. Uh, Suspicious Death is actually a new one. Um, I'm kind of intrigued by that, so, uh, looking forward to that because uh, so far these sound pretty cool. So, next on the dish we have... Blind Beast. Hmm. Blind Beast is a grotesque portrait of the bizarre relationship between a blind sculptor and his captive muse, adapted from the short story from Japan's foremost master of the macabre, 
Itogawa Rampo. Hmm. Horrors of Malformed Men. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Blind Beast is a masterpiece of erotic horror that explores the all encompassing and overwhelming relationship between the artist and his art and the obsessive closed world that the artist inhabits. With maestro director Yasuo Mazumura conjuring up a hellish, hallucinogenic dream world in which sensual and creative urges combine with a feverish intensity. Sounds impressive. Uh, content, high definition, Blu-ray presentation, original and un uncompressed Japanese mono audio, optional subtitles, brand new audio commentary by Asian scholar, cinema, cinema scholar Earl Jackson, newly filmed introduction by Japanese cinema expert Tony Rands, Blind Bees, Mazamura the Super Essentialist, a brand new visual essay by Seth Jekowitz, trailer image gallery, and reversible sleep. So, hmm. Sounds interesting, yeah. This is uh, another new one. Um, I, I know of it, but uh, haven't been able to see it. So, uh, sounds interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Next up, we have... The Cat o' Nine Tales. Looks like a uh, 4K, um, 4K HDR. Uh, let's see. Following the success of his debut feature, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage... Distributor Titanus tasked writer-director Dario Argento with delivering a follow-up in short order. The resulting film, granted a greatly enhanced budget and heralded in the U.S. marketing campaign as nine times more sus suspenseful than its predecessor, was The Cat of Nine Tales. When a break-in occurs at a secretive genetics institute, blind puzzle maker Franco Arno, who overheard an attempt to blackmail one of the institute's scientists shortly before the robbery, Teams up with intrepid reporter Carlo Giordani to crack the case, but before long the bodies begin to pile up and the two amateur sleuths find their own lives imperiled in the search for the truth. And worse still, Lori, Franco's young niece, may also be in the killer's sights. So this second entry in the so-called Animal Trilogy found Argento further refining his distinctive style and cementing his reputation as the master of the giallo thriller. In addition to Carl Patton, James Franciscus, and Cynthia de Carolis, co-stars Catherine Spock and Rana Razumov feature, and alongside another nerve-jangling score by the great Inyo Morricone, Cat on Nine Tales remains one of Argento's most suspenseful and underrated films. Mm, kind of. Uh, not that I disagree, just... Uh, I've seen it before, yeah, this is probably like the lowest of his Animal Trilogy, so... Yeah, um... Still worthwhile, still worth watching, but uh, I'm not necessarily too high on it. But uh, let's see if all of these new uh, special features can change my mind. So we have a 4K restoration from the original negative. Uh, 4K UHD Blu-ray presentation in Dolby Vision. Restored original, lossless mono Italian and English soundtracks. Optional English soundtracks, soundtrack, subtitles for the Italian soundtrack. Optional English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. Audio commentary by critics Alan Jones and Kim Newman. Nine Lives, an interview with co-writer director Dario Argento. The writer of Many Tales, an interview with co-writer Dardano Sacchetti. Child Star, an interview with actress Cynthia de Carolis. Giallo in Turin, an interview with production manager Angelo Iaconio. Script pages from the lost original ending, translated into English. Original Italian, International, and U.S. trailers. Collector's booklet featuring an original essay on the film by Dario Argento and writing by Barry Forshaw, Troy Howarth, and Howard Hughes. Fold-out double-sided poster featuring original and newly commissioned artwork. Six double-sided poster card size lobby card reproduction art cards. Limited packaging with reversible sleeve. Hmm. Cool. Uh, excited to see if uh, this stuff changes my mind. Uh, like I said, not necessarily one that I'm really high on, but uh, I'm willing to give the film a new shot. Especially in uh, that kind of packaging. And it uh, looks like we have uh, one last film here. So, uh, last but not least, we have Brotherhood of Satan. Um, looks intriguing. Never heard of this one. Recently widowed Ben, his glamorous girlfriend Nikki, and a small daughter... Uh, I can't see that. The, there's a logo on the back of this that's um, obscuring the, whatever the name of his daughter is. Are on a road trip across the southwest, which comes to a screeching halt when they witness an accident. 
Heading to a, the nearby isolated desert town of Hillsborough to report it to the sheriff, they are met with a hostile reaction from the locals, who are gripped by paranoia and fear due to a series of gruesome deaths as well as the mysterious disappearance of 11 of the ch community's children. As the bodies continue to pile up around them, Ben and his family find themselves joining the sheriff, a local priest, and the town's enigmatic physician in the midst of a mystery that points towards a deadly satanic cult. Cool. Produced by Al V. Moore and LGQ, L.Q. Jones, a veteran character actor best known for his work with Sam Peckinpah, Brotherhood of Satan is an atmospheric and chilly tale of terror that provides a crucial missing link between Rosemary's Baby and the Devil's Reign. Wow. Okay, well, well you get, certainly got my interest with those two titles. In the cycle of Turn of the Seventeen Shockers involving sinister devil-worshipping cults lurking within the dark shadows of modern-day America. Not bad. So let's see, we have high definition Blu-ray presentation, uncompressed mono audio subtitles, brand new audio commentary by writers Kim Newman and Sean Hogan, Satanic Panic, How the 1970s Conjured the Brotherhood of Satan, a brand new visual essay by David Flint, The Children of Satan, exclusive new interview with actors Jonathan Erickson Isley and Allison Moore, trailers, TV and radio spots, image gallery, and reversible sleeve. Hmm. Wow, sounds interesting. Yeah, I've never heard of this one, so yeah, excited to dig into this because it sounds really cool. And if you're going to mention a missing link between Rosemary's Baby and uh, Devil's Reign, yeah, you've got my attention for sure. All right, so that's uh, this box down. So let's uh, set that aside. And let's dive into this one. So uh, let's see what this one is. Um, let's try down here and open it down here. Ooh, looks like a big one. And if I can get it out, it is threshold. Hmm. Yeah, never heard of this one. So, um, when a phone call from out of the blue brings Leo back into contact with his sister, Virginia, long estranged from her family due to years of drug abuse, he arrives to find her alone in a bare apartment in the midst of an apparent overdose. After the convulsions and nausea subside, Virginia insists to Leo that she has been clean for eight months due to the help of a mysterious group. She confides to her cynical brother that her edginess and paranoia actually stem from a sinister ritual conducted by the group that took her in at her lowest and eventually revealed themselves to be a cult. This curse bound her emotions and physical sensations to a man she has never met before. With his marriage on the rocks, Leo has his own demons to face. Nevertheless, he is reluctantly persuaded by Virginia to embark on a cross-country road trip to track down this shadowy stranger under the caveat that if he's nowhere to be found and it's all in her head, she'll go to rehab. However, as their date with destiny draws nearer, Leo begins to suspect his sister's tall tale might have some substance. Threshold, the second feature from co-directors Powell Robinson and Patrick R. Young, following their debut, Bastard, was improvised and shot on two iPhones over the course of a 12-day road trip with a crew of just three. Sounds like a COVID production, I'm betting. The result is an inventive and compelling psychological thriller with hints of the supernatural that recalls such indie cult classics as Ben Wheatley's Kill List and Benson and Moorhead's Resolution. I'm intrigued. Not necessarily the greatest uh, usage of uh, hints there, but I'm willing to take a look at it. So let's see. Uh, high definition Blu-ray presentation, original audio, optional English subtitles, Brand new audio commentary with directors Powell Robinson and Patrick Gar Young, producer Lauren Bates, and lead actors Joey Millen and Madison West. Brand new audio commentary with directors Powell Robinson and Patrick Gar Young and editor William Ford Conway. Crossing the Threshold, feature-length documentary on the making of Threshold. Elevating iPhone footage, color correction breakdown. Something for Nothing Indie Genre Director Roundtable, moderated by Scott Weinberg with directors Paul Robinson and Patrick R. Young, Brandon Espy from We Follow You, James Burkett from Coherence, Zach Donahue from The Den, and Al Canlahan from Witch Hunt. The Power of Indie Horror. Indie horror. 
acting for unconventional film roundtable discussion moderated by Zena Dixon, with actors Madison West and Joey Millen, Kelsey Griswold from Followed, Gabrielle Walsh from Paranormal Activity The Marked Ones, and Ryan Shoes from The Gallows. The Sound of Threshold original soundtrack, Threshold original outline script, trailer and the original and trailer and teasers, image gallery, and reversible sleep. So, uh, yeah, this one uh, actually sounds pretty cool as well. Uh, again, one I've never heard of, but, uh, yeah, hey, I'm willing to give it a shot. So, yeah, it looks like, uh, let's see, a uh, new package from Arrow that uh, I just got today. So, uh, you know, thank you again to them for providing the material. If uh, you're interested in me doing more of these, I'd be happy to uh, talk to you about it and, you know, send me your stuff if you're willing. I'm uh, more than happy to do so. So, uh, yeah, thank you again, and uh, talk to you guys next time.